So you're now working from home and you're desperately trying to stay focused. You need to get shit done, but for whatever reason, you cannot stop procrastinating and you feel like you're running on a treadmill. If that sounds something like you, then I completely understand, believe me, because I've been there myself so many times and I still have days like that. We're all human at the end of the day. But today I'm gonna to be going through the eight steps which I take to get myself in a state of hyper focus and how you can do so too. But before we get into it, make sure you smash that like button for me. Let's get started with this video. Okay, so a few of the things that we're going to be going through today may sound a little bit cliche or maybe even obvious, but it's the combination of everything I'm going to go through today which will enable you to squeeze more out of every minute in your day. And we're going to start off with this bad boy right here, yeah? Mobile phones, okay? The procrastination machine, the dopamine generator, okay? This thing literally has our brain wired up to want to use it to get positive dopamine rushes throughout the day. And if we're working, we're not getting our dopamine from that. And so we're gonna be drawn to this bad boy, to flick through it, to reply to messages. And so the only way to get rid of it is to take it away from our eyesight completely. So what I do is, it's hot today. I, uh, I put my phone, I put, chuck it in my bedroom, I put it on charge and I'll leave it in there whilst I'm working, whilst I'm in a state of focus or I have a safe down in my office and I'll throw it in the safe and lock it. In fact, the rest of this video needs to be recorded downstairs. So let's go down into the office now. There's a safe under one of the desks. Just open it up, throw the phone in, shut that and there we go, you can't get in. So this is really great. It's about 20 pounds on Amazon. It's good for people who can't trust themselves to not get their phone from the other room when they are working. Number two is making sure there is no clutter on your desk. You can check my Instagram. You will not catch me slipping on this. My desk always looks like this. Messy desk, messy mind. You do not want paper sat on here. You're gonna sat here working and be distracted, looking at that, thinking about what you need to do. So ensure that you have absolutely no clutter on your desk when you are working. The only thing I have on here is my affluent notebook, which doubles down as a task list. I literally just put tasks on here. Maybe I should start selling merch to you guys. You can only get these at the Affluent Awards evening at the moment. We've got an Affluent pen there as well. So that is number two. No clutter on your desk. Clear it all at the start of the day or at the end of the day would be even better. Number three is drinking enough water. Now seriously, I might sound like your parent right now, but so many people have this wrong. The number one symptom of dehydration is tiredness and fatigue. You need to drink a minimum of two liters of water per day. I drink between three and four liters when I'm really trying to get in the zone. This is a really cool bottle, by the way. It's a Lark bottle. You press the button up the top here. It has a UV filter inside, kills 99% of bacteria. And no, I'm not endorsed or an affiliate of this company, uh, but uh, apparently you can put river water in this. <laughs> not that I fancy trying it. But yeah, drink between three and four liters per day. If you have an afternoon slump, you feel tired in the afternoon, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be because you're actually dehydrated because you've been focusing all your time on working. So make sure you're conscious about how much water you are consuming throughout your day. It's gonna make a massive difference. Now, number four goes hand in hand with drinking enough water, and I'm referring to your diet now, and more specifically, avoiding carbs as much as possible before dinner. And yes, I know carbs are great, bread, pasta, rice, all the things that we love, but the problem is carbs take a long time for your body to digest, and all that time you're using energy, energy that you could be putting towards your work. And so I opt into a high fat and high protein diet, lots of veggies, lots of lean meat, and nuts and things like that, and what it does is it puts my body into a state of ketosis. If you don't know what that is, then Google it or YouTube it. We don't have the time to go through that right now. And I'm not a dietary physician or a nutritionist, but I'm just talking about my experience and what has worked well for me. Because this is something I massively dismissed when other people had spoken to me about it until I actually did this and I witnessed for myself just how much more energy I had throughout the day when I tried to lay off the carbs until the evening. And then if you want to gorge out, you can put yourself in a food coma in the evening and eat as much pasta and rice as you you want to. Number five is listening to non-vocal music. If you're anything like me, you don't like working to complete silence, but equally, you don't want to be playing your favorite band all day because you're going to be singing along and it's going to distract you. So I've got a couple of tools for you to use here. Number one is brain.fm. It's a website with a database of scientifically proven music to help you get into a certain state. So here we have music to get you focused, relaxed, or sleep, and all the different types underneath. You can click on any of these and you can play them for 30 minutes, an hour, or two hours, or even an infinite loop, depending on how long you want to stay focused 
focused for. There's a link in the description. You can click that and check this out. Play around with the music. They have a free trial on at the moment as well. Now with our Cantia change, I'll go over to YouTube and I'll type in concentration music. And we have study music alpha waves. This is definitely one I've listened to many times. And I'll probably listen to all these playlists over the years. Um, Lo-fi, hip hop, binarial beats are great. All of these are non-vocal playlists, which you can play throughout the day. And the good thing is they're hours long, so you don't have to be changing the music all the time. Now, finally, to give you some diversity, if you have a Sonos system or Apple Music, there is a playlist called Pure Focus, which sometimes I like to play throughout the house. And there's a series of non-intrusive, non-vocal songs that you can play whilst you are working. So these are some great alternatives for you to use. If you want to listen to music, you don't want to work in dead silence, and you want to make sure it is non-vocal so you can stay concentrated throughout your day. Number six is making sure you are comfortable and warm. I always set my thermostat to 21 degrees, which is not too cold and not too hot. I wear a t-shirt and jeans, sometimes even a hoodie or a jumper. And the key here is to make sure you are comfortable, but not too comfortable. You need to make sure that your mindset is ready for work. Just because you're not leaving the house doesn't mean you don't have to get ready. No working in your PJs or in a full tracksuit. You're going to be in a lounging state of mind. And so you need to ensure that you still get ready for work. Going hand in hand with being comfortable, number seven is making sure you have a great office chair. This is a Herman Miller Aeron. It's got fantastic lumbar support. It's adjustable in so many different ways. Granted, it's not the most affordable chair for a beginner. It's around a thousand pounds a pop, um, but it really is the best office chair I have ever had. And I started off in an Ikea chair. It was around a hundred pounds. So just ensure you're not sitting on something rigid. You want something with lumbar support. Believe me, your back is gonna thank you. You invest in a good bed because you spend eight hours a day in it, or you're gonna be spending eight hours a day in your office chair to ensure you have something solid which provides you enough support throughout the day. Now finally, number eight is working in a secluded area. And what I mean by this is separating yourself from other people as much as you possibly can. Now granted, this is hard for those of you who have got families, especially young families, but try and allocate an area of your house to working and let people know when you're working not to distract you. You'll speak to them at lunch because it's not just them, but it's you as well. You'll wanna bounce ideas off them, share some excitement, but a two minute conversation can quickly turn it into a 30 minute one and it can literally zap so much time out of your day. So try and ensure you are secluded when you are working. Granted, I'm a bit fortunate that I live on my own so I don't have that problem. But if you do have a young family, the best way to do this is just ensure that there is a separate area of your house allocated for work and let everybody know in the household that they're not to come near that area when you are working because you have shit to do. Now, I'm fortunate that I also have another working station. This is just the office in the house. I do have another desk upstairs. That's my weekend desk. It's a sit-stand desk sent to me by Autonomous. So thank you for sending me that. And it's really great for posture. If you have the opportunity to get a sit-stand desk, I would highly recommend you doing so. There is a link in the description. And uh, yeah, that's my weekend desk. That puts me in a different frame of mind on the weekend. We've got nice panoramic views of the forest and river in front of the house. But I hope this video has been really valuable to those of you who are maybe new to working from home. It can be really daunting and it's very important that you get all eight of these things right. As I said, some of these things may seem cliche and you may be like, oh, Jordan, I knew you'd say that, but actually it's the combination of everything I've gone through in this video today, which is really going to help you get into a state of hyper-focus. Now, if there's anything else that you think I've missed from here, anything that you use to get you in a state of focus when you're working from home, please do drop me down a comment underneath this video with your suggestions. Help everybody out and share this with somebody who will get value from it. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Thanks so much, guys.